Hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon, I don't know. Uh, my name is Gus, people, uh, Gustav, but people call me Gus. And today I would like to talk to you about TensorFlow tooling and how important that is for your ML journey. So let's start by thinking, imagining uh, a thing. So if you know how to develop software, if you're a software developer, it will be like a it will be easy for you to imagine that, but imagine you need to develop some kind of app, uh, but without an IDE. So you will not have any support from an IDE. You do everything on a very basic uh, text editor. Let's support you. Don't let's imagine you don't have any support libraries to go and help you with your code. You have to do everything from scratch. Now let's suppose you also don't have a debugger. So if you need to understand how things are working, what's happening inside your code. Uh, you have to do it by printing things, or you have to reread your code multiple, multiple times. And you also imagine you don't have, you cannot ask for help. You cannot share your code with anyone to take a look. So if you're a software developer, that's clear uh, an issue, right? Uh, you need all those tools to help to support you in your job. And for data scientists, that's exactly the same thing. You cannot do a good model, you cannot build a good model with great results without proper tooling. And even uh, if you have, you build a good model without the tooling, when you need to do it on production, for example, if you go outside of research, but you need to deploy it somewhere, you need to put on an app, you need to create a service, uh, you will also need tooling to do that. It's not something you can just uh, do without any help. Uh, so, what I want to talk to you about today is that TensorFlow is not only a library to create ML models, it's way bigger than that. It's a complete framework that will help you build a model, uh, understand the model, debug, and deploy in production, and keep it running. So, this is a whole framework It's way bigger than that. To start with this, this journey, let's start with the basic thing. Let's start where we can code where we can start writing our model. So one thing that we, uh, it's not exactly from TensorFlow framework, but it's one tool that we provide is called Colab. Colab is basically a Jupyter notebook hosted in the cloud for you. It's completely free. You just go to colab.research.google.com and you can uh, run these, these Jupyter notebooks uh, for free. And they usually, they come already with TensorFlow installed, uh, NumPy and some other uh, package, you have access to some GPU, you have access to some uh, some amount of RAM. Of course, since it's uh, uh, it's free for everyone, you cannot abuse that. And there are some limitations on uh, how much resources you get. Uh, just to understand this this tool, we have been using we've been using internally since 2012, and we of course worked a lot with the Jupyter. Uh, notebook people to make the best product possible here. And we launched externally in 2017. And what we do is we have a lot of pre-warmed VMs with these packages installed already. And of course, they have some resource limits, as I said, but you can uh, run notebooks for a couple of hours. You can train, you can do all kinds of things you want, and then you can just uh, disconnect later and the VMs will be deleted and resetted and uh, pre-warmed again for someone else. Of course, if you don't have all the packages you, you need, you can install, you can pip install anything you want. You can upload your own files. You can download files from your Colab notebook. You can, uh, the Colab can be saved to, uh, to your own machine. It can be saved to Google Drive to share with someone. Uh, you can uh, commit this to GitHub and people can from GitHub, for example, click there directly and open this on Colab. So you have all these kind of integrations that make uh, sharing your code and continue your work super easy. If you need more resources, you have two options. You have the Colab Pro option that you, uh, you pay a fee monthly and you have, of course, faster uh, hardware. You can run your tests for way longer and you have more memory. This is one option. It's not available everywhere. Uh, it's available for US only, I guess, uh, for now. But if you need more that like today, you can just use your Google Cloud uh, console. You can create a collab there and you can assign any machine with GPU, TPU, uh, any amount of memory and processor you want. And you can run that for as long as you need. So this tooling is completely available to you. Of course, if you do on GCP, there's, uh, there's a cost. 
uh, for EVM that you're going to be used, but that's expected, right? So this is for when you need to develop something, you have like an like environment to start with. Uh, the next problem is, so we see a lot of papers coming from machine learning researchers. There's a lot uh, of new models coming. Uh, and what you do is, oh, I like this research. I like this new paper. And now you want to take a look. You want to use it. You want to deploy. And the main challenge is uh, you find this code on GitHub, for example, or any other repository, it doesn't matter. Uh, you find it in a web page, and then you're thinking, how do I use that? First of all, the documentation, there is no, how do you, def anyone can do any documentation they want, so there is no default. And then the, the come the other more tricky problems, which are, is it safe to use this code I just got from somewhere, from some random person? Uh, is it a fair model? So in terms of fairness, uh, does it have any kind of bias? Is it written somewhere? Uh, what's the latest version? Because you, you, if you search, just you search on any search engine and you find this, this module, this implementation, and then you can, of course, start using it, but this is the latest version. And this is a challenge that's getting uh, more and more common to everyone, because if you want to just, uh, you want to use a model that someone already made, it's a challenge, right? And sometimes you need to, you get access to the, the, the model itself, to the code, but you don't get the model, the train model. You don't get the weights. So then you have to do a lot of work yourself. So this is this is a big challenge for people trying to deploy machine learning. And that's where TensorFlow Hub can help you. TensorFlow Hub is a repository for models. And uh, in, on TensorFlow Hub, if you just go on tfhub.dev, uh, you will see that we have models for image, text, video, audio, and you can easily uh, download them. There is already documentation. There is sample code. There is a uh, collab that you can click and try that already uh, in the browser. You don't need to download anything at first. Uh, you can, you have, you know who is the publisher. You know which, what's the latest version. You know uh, the you know about fairness, you know uh, where to use, because some of the mods will tell, look, this is not good for situation A, B, and C. They will tell you specifically when that mod will be good to be used. So you have all this information in one place with search capability, of course, and filtering and all those kinds of things. So let's take a look. Uh, we have more than a thousand models already available for everyone to use. You can just go there and search and find uh, what can help you with your task. As I said, you have like, this is a default, uh, one of the, the models is from MobileNet V2. And as you can see there, the, uh, in the documentation, you have models. This model specifically has a version for uh, TensorFlow.js. As you can see there, it has a link to a collab that you can just click and try it out. And that's Easy as that, you just click and try it out. You can see the code, how to use the model. There's overview, there is a link to the paper. There's all this information right there. So it makes your life way easier. Uh, and then let's suppose you decide to use a model from Hub. How would you use that uh, in your ML? How in your ML environment, how would you do that on your model that you're working on? So let's go through an example here. So style transfer is a, a is a cool, I like it. it's a cool uh, machine learning application. Uh, you have an image, you we call that content image, which is like a picture for something, and you have a style image, which can be, for example, uh, a, a picture of a painting, a famous painting. So what we want to do here, we want to apply the style of the style image, of course, to the content image, and have like the. Uh, it looks like that the content image was painted by the artist here. Uh, so how do we do that? We have, of course, a, a style transfer module on TensorFlow Hub. Here it is, the, the handle. Uh, one small detail here. This handle is, is an interesting thing. If you just copy and paste this handle and put on a browser, it will take you to the documentation page. If you try to download that, it will download the module. So you, these links work uh, both ways. You can use that as documentation, and you can use that to download the module. And the same for TensorFlow Lite in JS, of course. So next step would be uh, import TensorFlow Hub, load the module, and 
give two images, that's it. And then you have the result here. So this is a full implementation of, this, uh, of a style transfer application. Uh, as you can see there, there is no need to retrain anything. You don't need to worry about uh, uh, anything, basically. It's just that. It's, you can do that uh, like in five minutes, just copy. Of course, there is, uh, uh, there is some, some details I'm hiding here. It's in uh, content image style has to be in a specific format, of course. It cannot just uh, show anything, but that's uh, boilerplate code that you can take a look and uh, showing the image is the same thing. So it's very easy. There is a tutorial if you need. Uh, let's take a look on a text classification example. So one uh, application that we see a lot of people using is, so when you do text classification, uh, one of the problems or the challenges you have is that you need a embedding, an embedding for the for the text, right? How do you convert the text to some kind of representation in a space? And when we go to TFHub, we have a lot of embeddings with for multiple languages from multiple data sources. So to use an embedding, again, same thing. Uh, you get the, the URL from the documentation. On this case, we are going to do uh, uh, a model, we're, we're not going to just use the embedding. We're going to do uh, a model to classify if a text is positive or negative uh, in, in their sense. So let's let's do, first of all, we load the Keras layer. So if you know what's Keras, uh, it's one of the APIs we support in TensorFlow, it's the uh, suggested API. And we are going to load this Keras as an embedding. And then we just create a Keras model, a sequential one, put the embedding to dense layers, define the optimizing the loss, and then we train, this is training uh, a model to do sentiment analysis, right? So the result here will be if the, the input is positive or negative, and you can see it fits in one screen, uh, and you can replace the embedding URL that you see over there by, there's a lot of them, you can just keep changing and trying out. So this is how you can also, another way to use TensorFlow Hub. This helps a lot. Uh, some of the models in Hub, they have visualizations uh, on, this, on the documentation page. So you can, for example, for this one, for the Met uh, art collection, for the flowers, for the spice demo that does speech detection in audio, you can try the model right there without going to a collab. You can just, for example, drag an image, or you can, <laughs> if you want, you can sing on the spice demo and see how great you sing. Uh, I tried, and of course, for me, it's, it was horrible, but I'm not a senior. So, but it's it's a very cool pr uh, presentation. You can really take a look. Uh, this Spice demo is a good one. The others are great, and we are uh, working with publishers to keep putting this kind of uh, visualizations because it makes everyone's life easier. You can just drag and drop an image to see how good the model will uh, behave with your images or how good it will behave with your voice. Uh, one of the new things we improved lately is that we have multiple filters. So you can see here, you can search for specific deployment types, like for example, TensorFlow Jazz, TensorFlow Lite, uh, or Coral. We can also define if you want to a model that's from TensorFlow 1 or TensorFlow 2, or if it's fine tunable. So the fine tunable, the idea is that if you want to use that to do style, uh, not style transfer, to do transfer learning, sorry. To do transfer learning, so you, uh, can I change the weights a little bit? Can I work on that? Some models allow, some doesn't, so you can filter it over there. So this is one of the improvements. The other uh, things we, we improved uh, lately is that now for TensorFlow Lite models, we added metadata, which helps you understand exactly how to use a model. This is something very, very new. And for TensorFlow.js, we also have a lot of new models being published uh, on Hub to make it easier with documentation. Some have visualization, collab, and everything. So when we think about how to uh, reuse a model, how to get a reusable model, uh, TensorFlow Hub should be on your list to think about it because you, you kind of have everything there, and of course, it's uh, yeah. Today, you anyone can publish, can su submit uh, on the um, TensorFlow.org/hub. You have a publish link there. You can uh, submit a model you have. That's that would be amazing. Uh, we have also a list of requests if you want to create a model that people are requesting to publish. That's also great. You can do all of that. 
the models will, of course, they, we, it's not completely open, right? So there is a, a process to see if the model is okay, if everything works, because there is this kind of control just to keep it safe, to keep it fair, to keep it well documented. So it's not super open in terms of anyone can publish anything anytime. There is a process, but that guarantees that the models you get from there are uh, good models that you can work on, that you can deploy. The other thing is uh, we have a lot of publishers. It's not only Google. We have our friends from Microsoft. They're publishing. We have friends from uh, NVIDIA published models. We have uh, people from Kaggle, uh, Kaggle winners publish their winning models. So we have a bunch of uh, uh, publishers we have, and they are you know, keep publishing. So the idea is we keep improving the number of models. This is a great to please take a look. And now we have another challenge, debugging. When you do your code, uh, sorry. Uh, when you do your code, you and you need to understand what's going on. So you do in a regular software development environment. You do your code. You uh, have to understand what. So the behavior, what of your code, what it is doing. Sometimes you're calling a library, and the result is not what you expected, and you're trying to understand or these kind of things. When you do regular software development, uh, that's kind of a uh, solved problem. We know how to do that, right? But when we do machine learning, the challenge is a little bit different. We, for example, if you need to train a model for a thousand epochs with a huge uh, data set, you cannot go step by step. You cannot go and understand every step what's going on because, uh, that, first of all, it would take forever. And second, you might... Uh, it's not doable. It's basically simply not doable. So debugging, when we do machine learning, is doing is uh, it's done differently. Uh, you need to look into the overall picture and understand a lot of other things instead of only what is the value of a variable in a specific line. So how do, can we help you with that? We have TensorBoard. TensorBoard is a visualization tool for all your uh, TensorFlow needs. So uh, you can visualize all the outcomes from your model, uh, all the metrics. Uh, you can visualize loss, accuracy. Uh, if you're training, for example, an image classification uh, model, you can see the images and see uh, which labels they're getting uh, in the accuracy. You can see, of course, the graph representation of your model. You can see uh, all kinds of metrics from your model. Can, there, we can see later, I'm going to show some more items on that. So this is how you would debug your module is this is a way to understand what's going on and so TensorBoard is here to help and of course you can run that from a command line and then you can just access that on your browser so it's a it's a web app that you can just visualize everything it's super beautiful you have a lot of visualizations out of the box you can uh, even customize if you need something very specific you can create your own visualization uh, of course the code is completely open source so here you can see that you can, for example, you can tag executions. You can visualize multiple uh, model, uh, multiple uh, training sessions, and see how if your model is improving with uh, the change you made, or if it's not. You can uh, uh, see all of them in the same screen, so you can compare. This is uh, this is basically TensorBoard, and you can also lately we added some hyperparameter tuning dashboard, so you can define your hyperparameters for a model. And this will show you the results and how good they are in terms of uh, which values are good, which are not. So you can visualize and you can also compare with previous executions. So this is something very cool. And to use TensorBoard, I guess most of you might know about that already, but you just define like a callback, uh, a Keras callback TensorBoard. You define the log here where all this data is going to be saved. Uh, and the frequency and stuff like that. And then you just add this call back to your fit method, to the fit call uh, when you're training your model. And that's it. Uh, it's all of this going to be saved in the log tier. And then you can just point your TensorFlow, your TensorBoard to this log tier. And then you can just see all those results that I've just shown. Uh, one other new thing that we have is that you can, uh, from Colab, you can invoke TensorBoard 
So you have a cell that has TensorBoard embedded on it, as you can see here. It's uh, kind of easy to do that. And it's uh, so you don't need to go to another tab. You don't need to go anywhere else to see the results right there. And it's the same TensorBoard. And it's just embedded on Colab. So this is a very cool integration. Uh, I would suggest you take a look also. Uh, and and then we have another challenge over there. So when you are doing model, usually you, uh, if you're doing research or if you're doing on your... Uh, company, right, uh, where, you, where you work on. Oh, okay. okay, I'm going to finish really soon. So if you want to share your results with someone, uh, it's it's a challenge. But we also have TensorBoard.dev that you can upload all your Tensor, uh, your log, your uh, execution logs to TensorBoard.dev. And then you can, from there, you can have the same visualization. We have a, like this, this paper we published that has all the visualizations shared on TensorBoard. You can just go and see all the parameters, all the execution, uh, the laws, the course, and all, all of it. And all you have to do is call this TensorBoard from command line. It will upload for you. And then you can visualize the same way. And then you can share on social networks. So that helps you share your results with other people. Here, it's some people already doing that. And tensorboard.dev. Just to summarize, uh, to get good results, you need proper tooling, right? And TensorFlow is more than just a machine learning SDK. It's a true framework. And today, we've seen Colab, TF Hub, TensorBoard. But we have way more tooling than that. We have TF Flight if you want to deploy on mobile. We have TensorFlow Jest if you want to deploy on a browser or on a Node.js server, for example. We have TFX that will take care of all your pipeline from data from getting the data to deploying to a TF serving and uh, that will help but it's I don't have time to talk about all of them uh, but that's basically that thank you very much uh, thanks again Luis for your talk and um, we have uh, some questions for you and let me just see them on uh, the discord channel and uh, let me collect something okay the first one uh, it's about Colab. Colab is a pro version, but it's only available in the United States. And do you know when it will be available in EU? Uh, hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining the, the session. So we don't, of course, we don't have that date for whenever it's going to be available. We are working on that. As of today, you can, one thing you can do, you can use Colab inside Google Cloud Platform and then uh, you can use any machine you can create. Uh, it's just, of course, it's not going to be uh, free, but you can still use Colab over there uh, for longer periods of time with less resource restrictions. And but we are working to bring uh, Colab Pro to all every other country. Okay, cool, perfect. So for the first operations, this is a second question: um, Is it better to use Keras library or TensorFlow? Uh, that's a good question. So if you are starting now and you are learning how machine learning works, Keras is the best way to go. So you can use uh, Keras uh, API on TensorFlow, right? So it's completely integrated. The, it's, it's a perfect integration. So you should look into that because it will make your life easier. And if you get to a point where uh, the layers, the, op the metrics, the optimizers, or anything from Keras is not enough for your research, for your module, you can always extend it and make it uh, more suitable for your problem. So you have the full path from uh, beginner to intermediate to advanced. And yeah, so you should start looking to Keras uh, right now, Keras API. Okay, cool. Um, I have a third one. It's a long one. So let uh, give me the time to read it to you. Sure. So there is there is something about Colab and, Ju and Jupyter in general that I find very inconvenient. It's is Marco. Uh, there is no easy way to reconnect to the kernel uh, once the browser is closed. If I train a model for weeks, I don't want to have my br browser open. So do you have any solution to this problem? And uh, right now um, is using Apache Zeppelin since uh, it doesn't have this problem. Perhaps Colab Pro doesn't have the same, this aim, this same issue. Yeah, so that's uh, so the collab, the, the free version, right? Uh, it has restrictions, of course, because first of all, it's a free product, and there's a, the resources are shared among all uh, everyone trying to use them. And if we allow people to just stay using the same machine forever, it wouldn't be fair to others. Uh, collab Pro, of course, doesn't have that restrictions. You can connect for way longer and keep running your process. But as of today, if you connect to a, a 
Google Cloud uh, VM, you can close your browser and reconnect later and continue the process from where you started. So your session should be there. You should, uh, if you're running process for a lo uh, longer period of time, that would work fine. That's what uh, lots of researchers do. They just keep uh, reconnect to the same session, continue their process. Of course, one other thing you can do is you can, uh, while training your model, you can also save checkpoints uh, so you can continue later if you need. Uh, but you can always, if you have your own VM that you're connected, you can reconnect to it and continue from there. If that should work like that at least. Okay, nice, perfect. Final question. Um, in your opinion, what, what, are, what are the most uh, crucial skills for a developer who wants to start a career in machine learning? First uh, is the will to read a lot because the field is evolving super fast. There's always something new happening. Uh, lots of new papers, lots of new research and cool things happening. So first you have to be aware of that, that you have to study a lot, but it's uh, worth it because it's great. It's a field that uh, everyone is talking about. You find a job easily. Uh, the other thing is you might start playing around with uh, easy models or easy tools that you see online but at some point you have to go a little bit deeper to understand how the basic math behind it works so you have a, a when you have a better understanding you feel more comfortable and then you can uh, 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 do your own experiments so uh, that's that's the a good field to be at and there's a lot of resources on tensorflow.org to start playing with it uh, there's also the machine learning crash course uh, from Google that you can learn all the math behind it, understand how, why things work like that, how they connect. So that's, that, that's a good start. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.